What's up everyone? Welcome back to Lace Up Channel. My name is Mickey. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to integrate two systems, whether it be an ERP and a WMS, a sales app and an ERP. We do all of these integrations. Overall, I think I've done like 45 integrations in this company, but the way that those integrations happen always boil down to three things. The first one, flat file integration. The second one, integration through an API. The third one, integration through a database read and write. So let's get right into it. The first type of integration that happens between two systems is a flat file integration. We've done this integration type with odd ended ERP systems, but also with ERP systems like Infor, like SAP. Normally, this type of integration is recommended by uh, the consultant. The consultant wants to sometimes control the reading and writing to the tables in the ERP. So let me give you guys an example. Normally a flat file integration involves the consultant creating files that they've read from the database in the ERP and uploading those files to an FTP site. Normally those files include customers, products, pricing, sales reps, basically everything needed in the core data for us to generate or execute transactions. Now, the way flat file integrations work is those files are uploaded normally to an FTP. We read from the FTP, we insert those files into our database and from our database, we execute transactions. Now, in order to write files back to the FTP site, what we do is we generate whatever transactional data is necessary and then we bundle up that transactional data and shoot it off to the FTP. So in a flat file integration, the consultant reads from the database and uploads to the FTP. We read from the FTP, insert into our tables. With that data, we generate transactions and we push those transactions back to the FTP so the consultant can read from the FTP and import into the ERP system. Now, now that you know what a flat file integration is, I know I don't want to get too technical or analytical in this video. Um, you need to know the pros and the cons. The pros are obviously that you are doing all the operating of the data outside of the structure of the ERP, which gives you a layer of security, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Um, but the cons are that normally flat file integrations happen in a batch process. They're not live and they take some time to execute. And by doing things in a batch process, you don't get live real time information transfer from one system to the other. That's where the API comes in. The API is this magical program written by a wizard that sits atop the ERP system. Normally this API is something that third party developers like myself can read and write to and it has a set of validation rules within it that determine whether or not the data that I'm sending the API is correct or if it's wrong. If it's correct, it imports the data. If it's wrong, it rejects the data. The beauty about the API is that normally all the big ERP systems in the world have well-documented APIs with get requests, i.e. requests where I can hit the API and request data. So instead of the flat file having to wait for the consultant to upload the file, I can hit the API whenever I want and get real-time data whenever I want. And in the same way that I can get, right, I can also push to the API. And when I push to the API, I can basically execute my transaction to my system right away access the API, pass the transaction, the API does its validation rules and imports the transaction into the ERP system. Imagine the API is like a secondary layer seated atop of the database of your ERP system and it's like the policeman. It lets correct pieces of data into the ERP, okay? And it rejects bad pieces of data away from the ERP. These things are brilliant. Every good system in the world has an API this is my favorite way to integrate. But let's go to my least favorite, yet it's probably one of the most popular ones used, especially within the community of smaller ERP systems. That's reading and writing to a database. When you read and write to the database directly, okay? Reading doesn't really have that many issues. It's actually very quick to read the data, read from the tables, import the data. It's a little less efficient than the API because normally with the API, you have really nice documentation that tells you which requests to hit in order to get the data back. Whereas a database, when you read from a database directly, normally you're going to need instruction from the database administrator, from the developer that designed it to know where the data is. But to get the data, you have to query the data. Okay. So you have to write your own queries pull the data out into whether it to be an export or into a temp table. Then you have to read from that temp table and import it into your tables. The reading process in my experience is actually pretty straightforward, but 
the writing process. The writing process for some ERP systems, the only way that you can actually write to them is by going directly to the database. But this is problematic because every single program in the world has a set of validation rules before inputting data into a database. And if you don't go through those same validation rules and you go straight to the data, at times you insert the wrong data in the wrong places and that causes tremendous amounts of issues in the interface of the program that you're dealing with. We've had to integrate with at least three or four systems directly to the database and everything would look great on the table. But when you, when you go to double click something on the interface, the program explodes, shuts down, and you have to literally debug this until you get the right data written to their tables. I would recommend stay away from writing to tables. I don't really mind reading from tables, but if you're going to write to tables, heed my cautionary words, you're probably going to have some issues. In order of favorites, I would go API first because it's the cheapest to maintain, the most effective, and the safest. I would go flat file second solely because even though it works, it's slower and it requires a middleman, i.e. your consultant to maintain. And third, going straight to the database, never the safest, only necessary when no other option is possible. I've got a great analogy that I won't mention to you, but imagine being around in the medieval times, everyone used just used to have kids. No protection was used. <laughs> That's what the database read and write is. Uh, hopefully that helped clarify how to do your integrations. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, go down below, give it to me in the comments, give me a subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care.